Good evening. Glad to have your smiling faces here today. Well, most of them are smiling. Okay, that went over like a love balloon, didn't it? Okay. Let's stand. Let's wake up a little bit. Sing to our king. Sing to the king who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation his empire shall bring. Joy to the nations when Jesus is king. Sing that again. Sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation His empire shall bring. Joy to the nations when Jesus is King. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He is all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. For His returning, we watch and we pray. We will be ready the dawn of that day. We'll join in singing with all the And Jesus is King. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He is all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised. Jesus, sing to the King. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He is all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised. Sing to the King, sing to the King, sing to the skies of mercy rain down the cleansing flood healing waters rise around us hear our cries Lord let them
your kindness, Lord, that leads us to repentance. Your favor, Lord, is our desire. It's your beauty, Lord, that makes us stand in silence. And your love, your love is better than stand in silence your love your love is better than life pray with me father we come here tonight expecting great and wonderful things to learn more about you, how to live in you, how to be in your presence, how to not just be hearers of the word, but to be doers of your word. Give us ears to hear, Father, and a heart to follow through and obey your word, your spirit, to speak when you say speak, to walk when you say walk. We are yours. Use us. In your precious and powerful name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Am I on? You can hear me? Maybe I wanted to keep it standing, John. Maybe, uh, But anyhow, this is my first attempt at doing something like this. I've been involved in Bible studies for eight or nine years, organized Bible studies. And um, we always had the book to go by or questions to go by. And this is the first time I've actually had to take something and make something that would make sense to you out of it. My wife made me put a lid on my water glass because she just knew I'd be nervous enough to spill it. So now with the lid, I'm in good shape. But uh, anyhow, um, if you will, um, let's start out and look at the prayer list for tonight. And then we'll, I'm assuming that's the order we go in. I have my anchor sitting here with me, so. <laughs> um, anyway, things to keep in mind, you see highlighted the Nature Coast Baptist Association mission to Kentucky. Um, both praying for the mission itself and for travel to and from for safety. Uh, Rob Bowen, back in regular shoes with custom insoles. And uh, thank everyone for their prayers there. Um, Pat, Linda Gregori's aunt, 
and that collar and cast off still on the visit and therapy therapy so that was good um, Jay's treatments for neuroblastoma cancer he is not eating and he had to get a tube in his nose he's not looking great his uh, eyes are or his levels are low um, Milton and Sarah Kelly health issues. Sarah's been in the hospital and is now in citrus rehab. Uh, Jan Cool, and then I don't know how many of you know Jan. Uh, they joined here two weeks ago. I think it was they joined the church. Um, I did get an update because uh, we're in the same, we're in the community Bible study together. And uh, I got an update today just a little while ago. The surgery was a six or an eight hour surgery. And um, through the six hours, nothing negative. Everything was kind of positive, and she still had a couple of more hours of surgery to go. And that's in the back. So if we can continue to lift her up in prayer and, and uh, through the night for, for healing and, and uh, uh, success of the surgery, Ed and down in New Bowl, Charlie and family, Brian, um, Ed and Donna's son and Charlie, dad, they died in a freak drowning in Guam. Um, so keep them in the prayer. And Gene and Wayne Snyder, Gene's biopsy at Moffitt is June 10th. Carol and Jim Trapp, Carol has part-time job this summer. She hopes they'll turn into full-time uh, health issues. Um, Rehab, Sarah Kelly. Does anyone now? Are there additions we need to make to the list? Jim Pittman asked to be put on the serve chain for um, acute sciatic nerve. Pat Pittman. Jim Pittman. Pittman. Yes. And that was acute pensioner. Did everyone hear that? Pam Pittman has a pinched sciatic nerve, so you need prayer for that. Um, anyone else? Any other things? Yeah. So number 10, Paul is having an angioplasty next week. So we'll keep that. Excuse me. <laughs> Anyone? At, yes, Bill. In case you couldn't hear that, it's um, Pastor Byron and Kim um, for their travel time and also to use this as a time of renewal um, to step away and enjoy it, right? And, um, and kind of refresh the old batteries, recharge the batteries. So uh, keep them on the list. Um, now break or silent, how we normally do that, I'm not, should I take a vote, oh, that's always scary, and, um, let's try to maybe, if we could, kind of get together and pray amongst four or five or six people, and then I'll close this in prayer, how's that sound? Can we do that? And then any other things you have or go through the list if you wish. And
Okay, a couple more minutes. out the do's and don'ts with the microphone. All right. I'll kind of close this little session with prayer then. And Father in heaven, we thank you for being with us here tonight. We know that we're two or more gathered than you are with us, and we just thank you for being here with us. Guide us and direct us. We've put our requests and petitions in front of you. And we know, Father, that you are a great physician. You're a healer. We know that because you're the beginning and you're the end. And Lord, we just thank you for that. Thank you for the healing that will take place. Thank you for the guidance, safety that you give those who need it and those who will be traveling and those who... Um, are, are ill at this point and or healing lord we know that you'll take care of that and father i've just asked that you uh, give me the words uh, tonight out of your word um, so that we gain some more understanding lord of what you expect of us so father as we get started thank you and i pray these in jesus name amen so working out of the book of James. Uh, there we go. And uh, I lost my marker. Let me get back here. And what I'd like to do is um, start out and run through the, the uh, first chapter, read through that, and then we'll come back and take it apart and kind of take a look at it that way. But the book of James, and then it's one of my favorite books because it gives us the guidelines of Christian living and how to live a happy Christian life. So, uh, if you would, we'll stand and read through this, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, chapter 1. James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations. Consider it per joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generally to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord he is a double-minded man and unstable um, in all he does. The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position, but the one who is rich should take pride in his low position because he will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises from the scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossoms fall and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away while he goes about his business. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because he has stood the test. He will receive the crown of life that the God has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one will say, God has tempted me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desires he is dragged away and enticed. Then, after desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin with all of its full grown gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting saddles, shadows. <clears throat> he chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers, take note that everything should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, for a man's anger does not bring about the righteous life 
that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all the moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do it, what it says is like a man who's looking at a face in the mirror and after looking at it himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he's heard, but in doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. And if anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and he is, his religion is worthless. worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being uh, polluted by the, wor the world. Amen. So, be seated and we'll try to carry on here. This is supposed to work. Oops. Work too much. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at the background of James. Um, and James was, um, uh, the Bible scholars have figured, or pretty much assumed that he was, that it was written between A.D. 44 and 49. And part of that was he was actually uh, martyred uh, in A.D. 69, so they know that that had to be before then, of course. Um, and it, it um, as you can see, that's the earliest book in the New Testament, which kind of threw me off, not being the, the uh, expert Bible scholar that I am. If it's the first that was written, why is it in back after everything else? But we know there's a reason for that. So that gives you a little bit. It was written for the dispersed, and I misspelled that. So if you're critical of my spelling, uh, my word correct didn't catch me, and I got caught in it. But the Jews were um, scattered among many nations, and it was from the persecution of um, Herod during that time, and then also as they spread out, they were scattered by the Assyrians and the Babylonians. So they were in many nations, and a lot of the, the Jews that were spread apart at that point did not return to Palestine. They stayed out, and it was written more for the current day Jews when he was talking that were still scattered out. And like I say, most of them, um, and then you that um, the book he referred to uh, the Old Testament. There's reference in, in this book of 40 times he references the Old Testament, and then he refers to the New Testament, the Sermon of the Mount, particularly Matthew 5 through 7, 20 times. So that's the basis of, of uh, the writing. It gives you a little bit of history about the book and what he was writing about. Um, most of, you'll see as we go in here, uh, James wrote with a passionate desire for all of his readers to be uncompromised, uncompromising obedience to the Word of God. And it points out in here also that, um, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about the faith, but faith, and it kind of goes, he bases the faith on the understanding and the putting of the Word in our minds and in our hearts. You know, and Paul talks about faith as works. Uh, so he doesn't really oppose him. He just kind of adds on to what Paul was referring to. Let's see if we can. There we go. Oops. Slow to respond and then I get ahead of it. Um, the book basically, in my opinion, is, based, is broken into three things. 
trials that we all face, temptation that I think we can say we all face, and then following the truth of God's word. And we'll break that down and, and go through that. Um, first, we'll talk about trials. And it says, which we read earlier in there, in verses 2 and 3, Consider for pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And it goes on and, and says that perseverance must finish the work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And there are several references, you know, in, in Scripture, um, Oops, where it talks about, um, uh, like in, in um, 1 Corinthians 3, 2. Um, actually, let's start out the first verse. Brothers, I must not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. And I gave you milk and not solid food, for you were not to be ready for it. But I think at this point, what James is saying, we're complete if... We've gone through trials and, and, uh, per, and uh, perseverance based on our faith and the faith that we have in God and the faith we have in God's word. So, and it tells us that perseverance must so they be mature and not incomplete and not lacking anything. So there are many times I think that um, I hear people say, um, when there's an accident or somebody's killed or uh, something that, why did God allow that to happen? And I think we've all heard people say that. But if their trust and their faith is in God, it will be taken care of and, and uh, there is a reason for that and not to question it, but God is in control. And I think we see that now that in today's times with COVID, I think was a big example of a test that we've all gone through, uh, but we know God's in control and we will come out of this and we'll be stronger for it and have more knowledge in the, in the field and to dealing with pandemics like this. And it, has, it hasn't been easy for us. Uh, certainly, you know, we didn't meet in person for a long time. Then we took it in steps. There was a lot of persecution and there still is of the church today in some of the states and the attack that the church has has uh, suffered during these times and and um, it goes on, as it goes on and says that um, um, it is there to make us stronger and in the end we'll be more complete and stronger and we can look at that and we have trust in that I just, uh, I felt that during this whole thing that if the good Lord wanted to take me home with COVID, then that was my time to go, and he had a reason for it, and, and uh, serving that. And I, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was in fear, but I really wasn't concerned about it because I felt like God was in control of what was happening to me, and if he wanted me to have COVID, the COVID-19, then boom, I'd get it. And fortunately, we made it through without it. Uh, so we, we know and we can look and we can just have um, those feelings, the good feelings inside that God is in control and that he will take care of us no matter what it might be. Um, and his, as I mentioned earlier, his emphasis on spiritual fruitfulness, I might say, demonstrating true faith. Um, and it, and it, it, too, to me, it reminds me a little bit of the book of the Proverbs um, where he's talking about it and giving, giving us advice and commands um, that we need to follow. And... Um, the trial is, is basically an emphasis in a person's faith that it's genuine and that it will prove itself during these times of trials and troubles. Um, 
And I noticed in, in one of the readings I'd done on this that they referred to the, the scripture, in the scripture, that the trials are a tool in our loving Lord's hands. And when you think about it, that's to build us up, make us stronger, and really build our faith. So um, a lot of times we'll find that, that trials, in a way, when we think we're in charge, all of a sudden it'll humble us. And we have to, we have to be humble to accept what's going on. It really kind of separates us and weans us from a depend, dependence on the world. And we know that the way the world's going right now, where that might get us. And uh, um, trying to read my handwriting. And it calls us to the eternal and heavenly hope that um, they reveal what we really love. And by that I mean, do we love the world or do we love God? And it, it kind of shows during those times of our real love for God. And they teach us a value of God's blessings. Certainly we're a blessed people as Christians, and, and he showers many blessings on us. Um, and it, I think one of the main things that it does, too, is it helps us better be equipped to talk with and to give advice to those that are going through trials and troubles at that point. It just gives us the background and the ability and the words to be able to go through that and maybe help somebody out that is in trouble. Let me see if I got way ahead of my PowerPoint. See what you can do if you learn to do PowerPoint? Which box? Pointed at the box. They didn't tell me that. Oh, this one. Oh, uh, our point back there too. <laughs> okay, keep us technology weak people in the know now, you know, so we can do this thing. But um, in one through five, it reminded me as we were praying that that if we lack wisdom, we should ask God, and that's with all of our prayers. And He gives generally to those who, without fault, in other words, He doesn't judge us or what we've done, he'll answer our prayers. Um, but when you ask, you have to ask with belief and with, um, what's the word I want to say, experience, but you have, you have to believe it and not doubt it. And your motivation has to be properly, in, in my opinion, in your prayer. And if that be the case, he'll answer those. And it says up there in Scripture that he's like... If he, do, if he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. There are times when I've faced a trial and it finally occurs to me, oh, why don't you pray about it instead of trying to handle it myself and get the answers I want. And then when I do, I'm confident that I'll be led the way. And many times I have been. So um, that gives us an idea on prayer. Oops. Now, why is it jumping? Is it because I'm so nervous and push it too many times? Oh, point it back there. Duh. Okay. <laughs> and um, as you can see from, from the word, blessed is the man who preserves under trial because he stood the test. He will receive the crown of life from God to those who love him. And I think that narrows down that first section talking about trials. must be my nerves pressing it too many times quickly. So the next section is temptation. And it says when tempted, no one should say God is tempting me. God can't tempt us. That's not his nature and it's not what he's there for. He doesn't tempt us. It's our desires. It's the world around us. And sometimes we fall into that. 
think we're guilty of that. A lot of times, I think about that sometimes with technology. <laughs> Duh. And, um, you know, the, the, we've become so reliant on technology, our telephones. Um, we just flew back from Indiana yesterday. Uh, my mother-in-law had passed away, um, and we had been up there for about a week or so. And flying back, and you sit in the airport, and you look at these people. Heads are down, and you think, oh, maybe they're... My head was down, but I was sleeping. <laughs> you know, but they're sitting in their heads down. There's families with kids, and they're getting ready to get on the plane. And instead of interacting, there was a family of, of four, dad and two kids. And I look over, and they're all four of them, heads down, pointed at the telephone. And sometimes I think we get that way, and we fall right into it. Or if we don't have our phone, that's our security blanket. And that's what it's talking about, is if we fall into the world, it's the world that's tempting us, not God. And when we have that temptation, God will bring us through it. Um, as it says, it says there, but each one is tempted when by his own desires he is dragged away and enticed. And that's exactly what we're faced with. And we need to get the words up here, but we also have to have them here. So, and as you can see, after the desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And with sin full grown, then it gives birth to death. And also, we're, we're people, and it has been since Adam and Eve, to throw the blame on someone else or something else. You know, Eve blamed it on the serpent. Adam blamed it on Eve, which he, sh he should have, you know. I mean, it's a woman's fault. But um, we always want to pass on. If we did something, we want to give it to somebody else. It's somebody else's fault. There was a comedian that said, the devil made me do it. Well, and in some cases that may be true. But um, so that's, that's with temptation. And, and um, uh, let's see if I've got it on the next slide. Nope, I don't. Um, anyhow, in, in Scripture it says, don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down um, from the Father of the hell, heavenly lights, who does not change. And our God is not a changing God. He doesn't change like we do and like, like our society does. Um, he chose to give us birth through the word of truth. And again, back to the word and how should we base our faith? But back to the word, that he might be kind of first fruits of all he created. And we see that throughout the Bible, that God wants our first fruits. There were times when they needed to bring the unblemished lamb and, and for the sacrifice and that kind of thing and the grain and stuff, and he was looking for first fruits. That's what he's looking about with us. When you think about it, we're the first fruits. He's given us the opportunity, the choice, to accept him as Savior, believe in him, and then we're the first fruits of, of uh, through that. I said that my, told Gene, that, Pastor Gene, that I, my talk could either be 10 minutes or 30 minutes. So it looks like we'll catch it in between here. And if you have any comments or questions during the presentation, say so. Um, and now listening and doing. Um, this is where the faith comes in and where I said in three parts, and this is the third part, the building of our faith in, in using God's word um, and the tools that he's given us to build faith. And like the scripture says, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry, for a man's anger does not bring the righteous life that Christ intended for us. So, in, and as, as it says during that time that, that, that um, um, and it, 
And the word tells us, therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which I think that really, can, we can relate that today too because of the evil and the perversion and the prevalent, I mean, the perversion that we see, even TV commercials. There are several I won't mention, but have what they're doing now, what they're showing on TV. And it can even be through programs where children might be watching. And um, so we're listening to that, we're hearing to that. But we can hear the word. And if we don't do something with the word, that's what God intends us to do. Hear the word, then do it. And if we don't, then we're showing that lack of faith See if I've got on here. And here it's a, it gives kind of the example in the scripture. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks in the mirror and after looking at himself can walk away and he forgets about what he looks like. And I think that that's about where we are. If we don't take the word and we don't practice it, we walk away and then we've forgotten it. So that's why it needs to go here and then into here. And he wants us to be doers, doers of the word. He gives us the word to save us and to guide us. And that's what we need to do with it. We don't just take it and run. Because um, like it says, um, the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he's heard, but doing it will be blessed in what he does. And I think that's true of anything we do uh, when we go to God for direction. Um, I got way ahead of my notes. I, way... I worked on these things and had all these notes down, thinking that I could refer to them and go through it, and here I am going through it. And, without him, so maybe I'm reading and listening. Um, and, it, and when we talk about doing it, and listening and doing, um, then it's kind of like um, a new birth, which is a revolt, results is from God's sovereignty coming down to the center by his grace, cleansing him, planting his spirit within him. We have the spirit in us and giving him a completely new spiritual nature. And that's what I know I'm working for and we should be working for as we study the word. Um, one of the Bible studies I was involved in, we, several years ago, we studied the book of John. And just this past year in CBS, we studied John again. And at my first thoughts, when I thought about it, I thought, John, I went through John a few years ago. Why do I need to go through it again? <laughs> well, there was a reason for that because I picked up that much more and stuff I hadn't seen the first time I went through it. And every time we go through the word, it can have a different meaning, a more in-depth meaning to us and changes in our attitudes and that kind of thing. So... Um, that's where we see the faith and where the faith comes from his word, listening to his word and doing his word and building our faith in that. So, let's see, we should be, oops. See, I can learn. Come on. Here we go. This is a little more of scripture. Um, and it, it tells us during that scripture that religion that our God, our Father, accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And that is the last verse, and I think it's one of the more meaningful verses here. Do not become polluted by the world. 
and in looking after orphans and widows, again, using the word, using the tools that God gives us, we can be a help to those who may not have it or may need the help. So with that, any comments or questions or corrections? Yep, that was it. So I hope, and uh, like I say, it's, as we go through this, we're going to be tag teaming, and you get me again next week, I guess, although we may need to talk about that now that our schedule's changed a little bit, and after I've done this now, maybe we're going to be out of town in the next four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, um, anything, anything else? Next week we'll do... Chapter 2, I hope that uh, I was able to bring something to light and to the surface that maybe helped you and uh, things that we can look at. So let me close this in prayer. Our Father, we thank you again for tonight. We thank you for being with us. We thank you for your word, Lord. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit indwelling us, that we can look at this word, we can hear the word, we can read the word, and we'll take it not only from our heads but to our heart, Lord, to be better, better servants for you. And Lord, we just pray for safety as we leave here tonight. We pray for good weeks and, and bring us back next week. And again, we pray for those who are suffering. Touch them, heal them, give them comfort, peace, and strength. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.